Megale, greetings. Welcome, uh, dear friends uh, and family, to this episode of Dankalia Hangit. Dankalia Hangit means Dankalia in focus in the Afar language. For those who don't understand the Afar language, uh, Dankalia is also uh, a name of traditional uh, homeland of the Afar nation in Eritrea. It is a historic, a strategic coastal territory in the southern shores of the Red Sea. Uh, our program, Dankali Hangit, uh, is dedicated to all issues related to Dankalia, uh, where we highlight the critical issues related to indigenous Afghan nation in Eritrea, where we expose atrocities such as uh, uh, crimes against humanity and and ethnic cleansing that is happening uh, to our people inside Eritrea. Uh, we highlight existential threats and exposing the systematic uh, policies of Eritrean regime, such as uh, agenda of assimilation, socioeconomic marginalization, excessive militarization, land and resources and geopolitics, uh, displacement of indigenous Afar people uh, from uh, Eritrea. Our program also promotes uh, the rights of self-determination and the aspirations of self-governance of Afar nation inside Eritrea. Uh, in a normal circumstances, our program caters to our Afar listeners in the Afar Af in the Afar language. Uh, however, tonight we are making an exception uh, to bring to you uh, our program in English because we wanted to uh, bring uh, to your attention somewhat unusual uh, an issue involving this Australian Parash Corporation and its uh, chairman, Mr. Seamus Cornelius, uh, who claims to have uh, invented the Afar traditional name, Danakili, that which I was just referring to. Uh, Mr. Seamus Cornelius, the executive uh, chairman of uh, this Parash Corporation, uh, was giving an interview uh, to Financial News Network where he claims to have invented the name Danakali, an Afar indigenous name uh, that have been in use since the time of Moses, since the time of biblical times, in fact. The reporter asked uh, Mr. Shames about where the name Danakali came from. Uh, he responded by saying this, and I, I really want you to listen to this short clip and I'll get back to you. Hello, Melissa Darmwan for the Finance News Network. Joining me from Danakali is Executive Chairman Seamus Cornelius. Seamus, nice to meet you and welcome to FNN. Thanks very much, Melissa. It's great to be here and I'm really happy to have this opportunity to talk to your viewers. It's great to have you. First up, can you start off with an introduction to the company? Danakali is a public company listed on the ASX and on the LSE uh, and we're developing the Kaluli sulfate of potash project in Eritrea in a joint venture with the Eritrea National Mining Corporation. By the way, where does the name Danakali come from? So the asset, Kaluli, is in the Danakil Basin, which is the D-A-N-A -A part, the Dana. And then Kali is salt. So we just put the two together, Danakali. Say what? Are you kidding me, Mr. Seamus? Is the D-A-N-A -A part, the Dana. And then Kali is salt. So we just put the two together, Danakali. Say what? Are you kidding me, Mr. Shameless Seamus? Dear friends, it is not enough for this guy to steal off our precious resources, but now tries to steal our indigenous names. Let me take a quick break here and come back uh, with who this corporation is really is and what more they are doing uh, in terms of involvement uh, in Afar territory in Eritrea. Salt. So we just put the two together, Danakali. Say what? Welcome back, dear friends. Uh, 
just to give you a background about this Parash Mining Corporation, this uh, Parash Corporation arrived in uh, Afar territory in Eritrea in uh, 2015. In fact, the corporation was then uh, known by its Australian name, South Boulder Mines Limited. Uh, and after signing uh, agreement with the Eritrea, it changed its name uh, to present name, which is Danakali Limited, a local Afar uh, traditional name. The corporation signed uh, a joint venture, a 50 percent secretive deal with the uh, Eritrean uh, corporation in Namco, the Eritrean National Mining Corporation. Uh, everyone knows in Eritrea uh, that this Enamco is in fact a camouflage, uh, a fraudulent uh, entity owned by the president of Worki himself and his military generals. Uh, no one knows its uh, previous dealings uh, that involved uh, uh, Bisha Gold in the, in the uh, Kunama territory, essentially destroyed the livelihood of our Kunama people in uh, that territory in, in the past, making hundreds of millions of dollars for Afworki and his uh, generals. Eritrean people got nothing out of that gold mine project. So this Parash uh, mine in Dankale is estimated to generate about $2 billion annually. It's a massive Parash project. Uh, this Afar territory where Parash was discovered is a vast, vast territory stretching over 400 square kilometers square. This is about the size of uh, the city of Montreal, for example, or the city of Detroit, uh, the entire city of Detroit. Uh, historically, uh, the Afar have lived on this uh, vast territory as pastoralist nomadic indigenous people. Uh, where they have raised their animals, they travel across the border for trades and have sustained their, uh, themselves economically using this vast territory since the ancient times. Uh, I want to get back to this absurd claim made by Executive Chairman Mr. Seamus Cornelius a little bit later. But I want to speak about the origin of the name Danakali or Dankalia, uh, a traditional uh, name uh, that Mr. Seamus Cornelius uh, is claiming to have invented. Uh, first of all, the name Dankalia is, uh, has been in this uh, uh, Afar territory since the biblical time, like I mentioned. Uh, the name Dankalia is, is actually driven from indigenous Afar tribe name called uh, Dankali tribe. It is a very common in Africa or elsewhere if you go uh, for the state or for the region uh, to acquire uh, their indigenous name or as a state name or as a regional name. Uh, so in a similar way, uh, the name of the state of Uganda, for example, was driven from the kingdom of uh, Buganda people. Uh, according to our uh, oral tradition and our indigenous of our storytellers, the name Dankalia first appeared during the medieval time in the region when the Afar Sultanates of Ankali and the Afar tribe of Danakil, Dankali uh, ruled over uh, much of the Red Sea uh, coastal territories known as Eritrea today. Uh, bo in fact, both of these Afar tribes are uh, in fact still exist uh, with us uh, uh, in Dankalia in Eritrea today. When uh, European colonialism first arrived in Dankalia in 1869, uh, before conquering uh, the, the Eritrea as a whole, the Italian colonialists established a colonial post in Asap uh, and um, called it La Colonia Italiana di Asap in Dankalia. So uh, they also have acknowledged the name Dankalia as it's uh, seen in this uh, 1869 picture. As you can see, uh, the name Dankalia is written across the territory. The Italians even documented the original Afar territory in Dankalia having its uh, geographical borders, uh, starting from uh, tip of Masawa, bordering uh, Bori Peninsula and the islands of Dahlak, all the way to islands of Ras Dumeira bordering Djibouti uh, on the Southern uh, Red Sea. Uh, perhaps we can uh, do a program 
uh, on another occasion on how the Afar anti-colonialist struggle between the indigenous Afar and in, in the uh, Italian colonialist during 1869 on, on a later date. Uh, on uh, my point is, brothers and sisters, uh, the name Danakali or Dankalia is is uncontested, uh, irrefutable historic indigenous Afar name. And the territory itself, Dankalia, is indisputable Afar traditional homeland, regardless of uh, who is in control today. Mr. Seamus, your corporation owes the Afar people an apology uh, for the cultural appropriation, the butchery of the Afar indigenous names, as well as its historic uh, identity. Your claim of inventing the name Danakali is, in fact, insult to indigenous Afar people uh, and indigenous people uh, elsewhere in the world. Uh, now, let's examine what Mr. Seamus Parash uh, Corporation is doing uh, that is even more serious, uh, such as being an accessory to ethnic cleansing and removing of the Afar from Eritrea. What Mr. Seamus failed uh, to tell us is that his corporation's involvement in Eritrea has uh, atrocious side, specifically the violent removal of the Afar pastoralists from their traditional lands and the illegal appropriations of indigenous resources and land grab made possible by a joint venture deal he signed with the Eritrean regime. So, Mr. Seamus, what we, the Afar nation, would like to bring to your attention, uh, sir, is that after, after you signed the Parash Agreement with your Eritrean counterpart corporation, the Eritrean regime has deployed thousands of soldiers in, on, on the Afar territory to make way for your project. To, uh, to protect your company, the Eritrean regime has told the Afar locals by way of intimidation and threats to vacate their homes and properties. Uh, they were told uh, they no longer have any claim to these lands uh, because the Eritrean state now owns uh, those lands. The soldiers then cleared the Afar families, uh, cut down indigenous trees, homes, uh, disrupting the Afar lives, uh, their way of life. Uh, they built roads to Parash, uh, uh, to Parash site, uh, essentially uh, engaging in forcible displacement of the Afar uh, population. The presence of your company has severely curtailed the free movement of the Afar population uh, in the region and severely impeded the, their way of life and economic means. As a result of the Eritrean government's policies of ethnic persecution, tens of thousands of the Afar people have been displaced and made refugees throughout the region. Uh, the Afar people have made numerous Ex, uh, complaints to international human rights mechanism, and they were successful in getting uh, the condemnation against the Eritrean government. The United Nations officials determined that Eritrean regime is in, in act, Eritrean regime's action and uh, uh, ethnic persecution of the Afar were intentional and that aimed to removing the Afar population from Dankalia. Uh, the UN uh, Special Rapporteur for Human Rights uh, mentioned your company involvement in the Afar territory, especially the Kululi Parash mine, uh, in its human rights report in 2020. Uh, furthermore, the UN agency called for the perpetrators of the crimes against Afar to be held accountable that the rights of the Afar communities need to be restored. Uh, so the UN is pretty much aware of your activities, especially your Kululi Parash project that you uh, obviously uh, uh, boastingly talk about and how successful it is. Uh, so these are serious crimes, which uh, uh, serious with a serious ramification for your corporation. Uh, I want uh, to stop uh, in this picture and show you uh, what this is uh, really. Brothers and sisters, have a look at this picture. This is in fact, uh, a traditional Afar barrier ground, uh, possibly containing the remains of our ancestors. We do not know what happened to this grave site after these pictures were taken. Uh, we clearly can identify the uh, corporation, Mr. Seamus's corporation surveying uh, this site. Uh, you, can you can be rest assured uh, they are not there to pay their respect for our dead.
think what happened uh, to this barrier site is obvious. Uh, the graves is probably being cleared to make way for your corporation uh, to dig parash in this territory. These are the type of questions we have for you, Mr. Seamus, and we want to get in touch with you. We understand the Eritrean regime told you this is a no man's land. Uh, there is no one lives there. But, but again, how come people die there? How come there's graves there? Is there anyone uh, who was living there uh, before you came? Again, I want to show you this picture here. Uh, this here is a picture of Parash resources being dug from traditional Afar uh, Parash reserves, uh, spanning an area, like I told you, about 400 square, kilometer, uh, uh, square kilometers of uh, traditional Afar land and territory. Mr. Seamus, according to your interview, uh, the corporation is planning on, on staying in the Afar territory for the length of the Parash mine's life, which is about 200 years. Uh, where is your corporate responsibility? Does your uh, business plan anticipate your company's ability to survive without the protection of the Eritrean military? Uh, do you ever consider, Mr. Seamus, that the political change uh, in this country can happen overnight? In case you did not know, the current tyrant, Isaiah Zaforki, is 75 years old. He is about to drop dead anytime soon. The country is a a pariah state, its human rights record is one of the worst in the world. Uh, the conflict uh, around Eritrea is raging as we speak. Uh, some, something major is about to happen soon in Eritrea uh, because the state is unstable. It's ruled by a military junta and its time uh, is going to end very soon. Uh, in another thing in your interview, you, you took a pleasure uh, of uh, mentioning how hot this area where your parash is, how stable, uh, how suitable it is for uh, 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 solar energy. But what you intentionally and consciously left out uh, is our, uh, the reference of, uh, to the Afar people in this region. It is just insulting on so many levels to hear you say your corporation have a superior uh, social and environmental impact on the community when you are in fact no, it, your corporation's activity is enabling the ethnic cleansing of our uh, very uh, same community you are responsible for displacing. As long as the colonial attitude reflected in your business model remains, your corporation's actions on the ground continues, you will be faced with so many challenges, including persecution for ethnic cleansing of the Afar population. My friends, as indigenous people, as people which have been systematically marginalized and forced into endless poverty, not only by the current repressive government of Eritrea, but uh, historically marginalized people, we, the Afar people, deserve better. We need to control our resources, our future growth in our, uh, in our territory. Uh, as long as general uh, ethic uh, of doing business or economic development in our region are concerned, uh, the Afar nation, in principle, is not opposed to a fair and equitable and socially responsible uh, economic agenda. But what we oppose is a colonization of Afar people, the illegal appropriation of Afar lands, resources, the displacement, and, and, uh, and being uh, expelled from our ancestral homeland. Mr. Seamus, the Eritrean government is ethnic cleansing the indigenous Afar people. Your corporation is financially enabling uh, for these atrocious uh, atrocities to continue against our Afar people. Uh, brothers and sisters, uh, that concludes our program today. As indigenous people, we count on your solidarity to keep fighting against oppression and systematic discrimination and injustice. Like Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We have no doubt with your support, we will reclaim back our indigenous rights, our dignity, our ancestral land and resources. We hope to see you again as we discuss critical issues like this in relation to Nankalia and Afar people. Uh, in our next program, perhaps we can bring to you the issues of 
a port of Asab and the return of Ethiopia uh, in Afar territory in Dankalia, the threat of expansionist Tamara, the threat of far-right uh, Tigrinya extremist groups like the Agazian movement, the rights to return uh, for the Afar refugees, um, and uh, another most recent development in, in regards to Ras Dumera, uh, where uh, the claims have been circling around that Ethiopian Navy uh, perhaps uh, will be uh, stationed there, uh, and other issues uh, that are of concern for uh, uh, Eritrea's sovereignty uh, and integrity of Eritrea. Uh, until we meet again, friends, thank you so much for uh, your solidarity. Thank you for listening. Nagai Kasoa. Malera noia, vadi marso. Malera noia, vadi marso. Malera noia, ya arme ekadure neya, ibadi marso. Malera noia, ibadi marso. Malera noia, mare ante le bori le neya, ibadi marso. Malera noia, 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 ibadi marso. Malera noia. Vadim Arsene, 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 Vadim Ar